Hey everyone, hope you're doing all right. And this week we've really received our fair share of Bethesda news. Yesterday we had the roadmap for Fallout 76 be released, and then today Bethesda has come out to announce that they're shutting down their Bethesda Net launcher on PC. So in today's video, I want to talk a bit about that and also explain why this decision should be a surprise to absolutely nobody. So if you enjoy this video, please like it. I would really appreciate it. Subscribe if you're new. Consider joining my Discord. The link is in the description below. But with that out of the way, let's get to the video. Okay, so to start, we should be covering what Bethesda has already said about their decision to shut down the BethesdaNet launcher on PC. In a BethesdaNet article, and I'll link that in the description below, they say the following. We're saying goodbye to the BethesdaNet launcher this year. We would like to thank you for your support and assure you that all of your games are safe. If you're not playing PC games through the BethesdaNet launcher, then your work is done here. Thanks for reading. If you do have games to migrate through the BethesdaNet launcher, don't worry. Starting in early April, you'll be able to migrate your games and wallet to your Steam account. For more details on what this process will look like, read on. You have plenty of time to plan and begin migrating your BethesdaNet library to your Steam account. The migration to Steam will include your game library and wallet, meaning you will not lose anything from your BethesdaNet account. Many games will also have their saves migrated, with a few requiring some manual transfers. For games that require it, you will still use your BethesdaNet login to sign in to play. Your BethesdaNet account will not be lost and will still be accessible on our website and in-game. And we will continue supporting all BethesdaNet accounts with our future titles. And then later the article does have a detailed FAQ which provides more information about how you're going to be able to play your games, what's going to be happening to the BethesdaNet launcher, and technically in May, that's when it formally shuts down, whether you still need a BethesdaNet account to be able to play certain games and access certain services, and yes, you will need to be able to. But TLDR, all your games, all your virtual currency, and most of your game progression and saves is going to be able to transfer pretty seamlessly. The only exception I could see is Wolfenstein Youngblood. So if that's not you, you're going to be totally fine with this. And they do provide a lot of information in that article, as I said. So link is in the description. Alrighty, so now let's talk about my thoughts when it comes to Bethesda's decision to shut down their launcher on PC. And to be clear, I did know this was happening. I knew that it was coming. I was an employee at the time when they told us that the launcher was going to be shut down and how everything was going to be transferred to Steam. So it wasn't news to me and I was essentially waiting for the news to come out so I could talk about it. So now that it is out and I can, let's take a step back and talk about why a publisher would ever want their own launcher in the first place. And I think it's pretty obvious, right? I think it comes down to money. When you have a platform like Steam or even Epic Games, which is a bit better in this regard, but those platforms are taking a decent chunk of the revenue when it comes to games on their platform, not just for, for games being sold, but also for in-game transactions. I think Steam at the moment for AAA is 30% and it's a bit better for indie devs, but still it's a pretty decent chunk of the profit. So when Bethesda looks at that or when Blizzard looks at that, whatever it might be, they think, oh yeah, I want more of that revenue. I want more of that run money. Let's set up our own launcher. And then when people are buying our games and buying all the in-game stuff, we're getting all of that revenue, right? It's not as clean cut as that, but that's the general idea. And I'm sure there are many other reasons why Bethesda would want to do this. But in my eyes, money is the main reason. It's the reason why you would want to go through all the effort and all the R&D and all the programming to set up your own launcher in the first place. So that was obviously the idea and really it started with Fallout 76. Fallout 76 was meant to be the game that launched the Bethesda Net launcher and set it as a platform for Bethesda, Net Bethesda games in the future moving forward. And to Bethesda's credit, they did support it with certain games. So you had Doom Eternal on there, you had a few other games on there. And yeah, it was doing okay for a little bit, but if you really looked at it and you looked, you know, in between the lines, you could start to see the gears turning and start to see how Bethesda was probably taking a few steps back from supporting this launcher and eventually deciding to sunset it, which is what happened. And yes, I was in the company, but there were some pretty obvious things if you look at it. First of all, Bethesda never really made an effort to, you know, inc include some new features or try out some new things. There was no uh, chat features when it comes to Bethesda Net, unlike Steam. There was no discovery. There was no anything like that. It was just Bethesda games list on the left. And that was really it. It was very, very bare bones. So when a company like Bethesda is not really investing in that launcher, you start to question why that's happening. Like if they're taking all this money and all this effort to be investing new features into the launcher, then maybe they're much less likely to be sunsetting it so soon or shutting it down so soon. But because they weren't doing that, I think it was pretty clear even at, at that stage that they didn't really intend to support this launcher long term. Also as well, simple things like if you're on a 4K monitor 
and you're using the launcher, it doesn't actually display in full resolution. I don't know if anyone's noticed that, but if you're using it in 4K, it actually shows up pretty um, expanded and pretty um, blurred. It, it, it wasn't the nicest to look at. I think it was fine on a 1080p monitor, but when it came to 1440p or 4K, it didn't really look that, that nice. And again, if you're supporting a launcher, that's something you would probably fix pretty quickly. And again, as well, another thing, the biggest thing that I had against the Bethesda launcher was the load times. It took every time consistently, one to two, sometimes even longer, one to two minutes just to load in the first place to be able to launch your game. I think we're all used to Steam loading like instantly. Like even when you want to start it up with your PC, it's right there. But even if from a cold boot, Steam loads very quickly, even when it has an update. But there's a net on average, like on a good day, took longer than Steam when Steam had Steam had an update. Like that's how lengthy it took just to open but there's net in the first place. And then you had to open the game itself, which took even longer. So you were waiting there for at least four to five minutes sometimes before you could actually play your games on Bethesda net. So again, just a few things if you actually looked at, it made it very obvious that Bethesda was not going to be supporting this launcher long term and that, and that eventually they'd be shutting it down. And I've seen some people have said that, oh, this is because of the Microsoft decision uh, or Microsoft acquisition and all that kind of stuff. I think people fundamentally understand Bethesda's relationship with Microsoft at the moment. And all, I all I'm going to say about it is that if Bethesda Net was doing really well, if it had, you know, a big, big audience base, and I had no idea of the numbers, all right? That was not part of my role, to be very clear. But if it had the audience base, if it had the consumers there, if it had really awesome features and all that kind of stuff, I do not think an acquisition into Microsoft would undermine that. Microsoft would not come in and be like, all right, Bethesda, get rid of your awesome launcher. And I don't think they're going to be doing, doing the same to Blizzard when it comes to Battle.net either. Like, I think they're going to let Blizzard do their thing when it comes to their own platform and their own launcher because that's where their consumers are. That's where their audience is. That was not necessarily the case for, for Bethesda Net. Really, Bethesda Net was a Fallout 76 hub. That was the main reason why, you know, they had it in the first place and why most people had Bethesda Net on their, on their system. But again, they started to do things which clearly showed they weren't really fully invested in this system. Another thing I'll give, give you as an example, when it came to uh, the review codes for Fallout 76, and how people would actually be able to review the game and get early copies. Of course, that was done through Bethesda Net because there was no Steam equivalent when it came to 76 at launch. Then when they started to do Doom Eternal and then other games after Fire 76, if you got those codes, you'd realize those codes were actually Steam in most instances. So even on that side, they were still giving out Steam codes when Bethesda Net was there. And you would wonder and question why that would actually happen in the first place. Like why not get your reviewers and all that kind of stuff on the platform that you built. So that was yet another thing which I think makes this decision less of a surprise when you look at it in the grand scheme of things. So. In the end, I do want to also say that I think this was absolutely the correct call. It was 100% the correct call for Bethesda to make to shut down their launcher. Again, for the for the issues that it had when it came to features and all that kind of stuff. But just looking at practically, yes, on paper, it makes sense. You want to get more of a cut of the revenue when it comes to your games. Fair enough. But in practice, it doesn't work because when it comes to the games industry and you have the biggest audience, like everyone's on Steam, and you're having especially new ip that's risky or a game like 76 which is, is kind of not tested yet because you know it, it's not a single player rpg especially when you have games like that you don't want to be setting up your own launcher which just provides another barrier for people to be downloading your game in the first place you want to go where everyone already is they can see your game at a glance and if they want to try it they'll try it there and people have a lot of faith in steam because it has the refund policy and all that kind of stuff I, it's very hard to get people to kind of split off from that so in my eyes, for Bethesda games moving forward, it makes much more sense to just go where the people are. Go to Steam, you know, if, even if you want to go to Epic Games, because I know it still ha it has a growing base, but go to where the, the, the consumers and the audience already are. It doesn't make any sense to try and build your own platform from ground up unless you have awesome features, unless you have a compelling reason as to why you need your own launcher, aside from the fact that you just want a bit, bigger cut of the revenue. So... I think it's the right call. I think it was long overdue and I'm glad Bethesda did it. And now everything's going to be transfer, transfer, transferred to Steam. And to their credit, 
everything's going to be transferred pretty seamlessly. All your games, all your virtual currency. So this shouldn't be an issue for anybody that's wanting to do this. But those are my thoughts. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm very tired. That's why I'm stumbling so much in this video. But let's get to the conclusion. Alrighty, Way Sanders, that is all from me. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And until next time, this has been Lone. Please take care of yourselves. And would you kindly keep fighting the good fight.